Welcome back. You just heard the 2015 State of the County Address from Erie County Executive Kathy Dahlkemper. County Executive Dahlkemper now joining us with the rest of the half hour for a question and answer as we, uh, as we delve a little deeper into some of the topics that are now facing Erie County. Well, let's start off first by asking uh, County Executive Dahlkemper, uh, how do you feel you've done in the past year? Well, it's been a really busy year. Um, people ask me how I like the job, and I tell them I really do love this job because I'm here in my community trying to make a difference every day. And I think when you look back at what we've accomplished over the past years, a lot of it has been internal, but there's been a lot of external things that we've gotten involved in. And we've really moved um, this county forward in many different ways, certainly uh, with some of the internal things such as the IT director, the procurement director, and changing some of those uh, internal systems. But when you look on the external, um, the WIB, the Workforce Investment Board, that has been a huge project that I've been involved in for the last, actually before I even took office, 14 months now. Um, when you look at being involved in the solution down at the Bayfront, when there was uh, the hotel uh, that the Convention Center Authority w wanted to build and the Scots and, and um, really had come to an impasse, and I got involved in that and helped to move the conversation forward. And we found a solution. And, and now, of course, the hotel is being built. And Scotts will soon be building on their property. So there's been a number of those type of things that we've gotten involved with, with from my administration that I think have been very helpful in terms of moving the county forward. Well, obviously, you're no stranger to public life. You had a term in Congress. Uh, now, of course, county executive. Um, you know, working at the courthouse, completely different animal from Washington, though. Um, what was your biggest surprise in, in year one? Oh, gosh, you know, I think one of the biggest surprises was in some ways how similar it is to Congress and the fact that every day I'm dealing with something different hour by hour. I might be, you know, talking about public safety one moment, and then now I'm talking about economic development the next moment. And that was similar to how things were when I was in Congress. But I think uh, maybe the biggest surprise uh, just from the county as a whole is just how people really do want to see things change. They really do want to see a brighter future. And... Um, they're willing to help uh, make that happen in lots of different ways. Well, I know one thing a lot of people in Erie would like to see change, the tax structure and how, how we're taxed and the burden on the taxpayers. Uh, any movement in that on your part? Well, that burden really is dealt with on the state level. When it comes to property taxes, that's what most people are talking about. And that really has to be a change that would happen on the state level uh, in the state legislature. And really, as a county, we don't have the ability um, we, we try to keep taxes down as much as we can, but we do have things we have to do that we are mandated to do uh, as county government. And so, you know, we're going to continue to work to control our costs to keep the taxes as low as we can. But to change the system would really take a fix. In, you may not be able to, to change the system, mm -hmm. um, but but. I assume you could throw your political weight behind something that you liked. At this point, are you in favor of tax reform? And if so, what kind of reform would you like to see? Well, I haven't seen a proposal come through that really um, seems to solve this issue. But I do think it's something that all of us need to talk with, talk to our legislators about and to, to see what kind of fix there would be. I mean, it would have to come, you still have to pay for things. You still have to find a tax in some way. So do you, do you put a tax on goods in some way? Do you allow... Um, some other type of, uh, you know, tax that would be statewide that would bring in the kind of revenue that we're talking about for the municipalities, for the school districts, for the county government. Because that's, we all depend on this property tax and we know how burdensome it can be. But I have not seen a proposal yet that I would say I would get behind. Well, and then the state house right now, they're trying to push through the, uh, you know, tax exempt properties because Erie, that's a big problem in Erie, mm -hmm. uh, but we're not alone in that. And uh, that is an issue now. I believe the Republicans are trying to push through now in the state legislature. Well, I don't think the state legislature should have control of determining what properties are tax exempt and which ones aren't. It becomes too political. And so I think it should stay in the hands of the judiciary and uh, therefore, hopefully, it is less political and really is done on a case-by-case -case basis and equitable for all of the tax-paying uh, citizens. Let's talk about jobs, if we could, a little bit here. Um, obviously, um, you know, jobs are, are at or near the top of, of just about everyone's priority list when you ask. Um, you, you spoke of the summer jobs program mm -hmm. during your address. Um, big success there. Um, 117, I think, out of 123 graduating from the program. Remarkable. But what's being done about the current workforce? We understand the need to cultivate the future workforce. What's being done to help out the current workforce as they struggle to find, uh, you know, family-sustaining, household-sustaining jobs? 
Well, that continues to be obviously a huge issue in our community. And as I mentioned, I've been involved uh, trying to get the Workforce Investment Board back to doing what it should be doing, and that's training those who are underemployed and unemployed for the jobs that are out there. You know, many businesses tell me they can't find qualified people. They have jobs. They're worried about those who are retiring. A lot of the people who work in factories um, are getting close to retirement age, and they have to replace those people with some qualified workers. So we need to be able to train our workers and making sure that we have a workforce investment area that is strong and vibrant, um, and it was not when I took office. So we've been working over this past year to really try to revive that and bring it up to the standards that all of us expect. And again, with that $3 million increase from the federal government, that will be very helpful in getting us to where, to really see where those needs are and try to align that better. Um, beyond that, we've got to make sure that all of our economic development organizations are working well together, and that also was not happening in the past. So trying to build those relationships, put down uh, our personal agendas or our egos, and really find ways to work together to attract new businesses, to make sure that our businesses, uh, businesses that are here are supported um, by the economic development community. And then that last piece, which I talked about, and that's the entrepreneurial piece. Mm -hmm. Our community grew because of entrepreneurs whether we're talking about the Hertz, whether we're talking about the Barons, whether we're talking about the Zerns, the Lords, that is how our community grew. We've lost our entrepreneurial spirit, and that Jumpstart report showed that. So we've got to rebuild that spirit because we know that most new jobs in this country are created by new businesses. Yeah, I just want to follow up quickly on that because I wanted to talk about that entrepreneurship. Uh, there's the new innovation collaborative out there. Um, we also, though, got some bad news, um, you know, being number two on a list of declining communities. It's one thing to say that we need more entrepreneurship. How do we spark that? Well, obviously, I think what the Innovation Collaborative is doing is good because what they are doing is focusing every day on the entrepreneur and then working with our universities, with our other economic uh, development entities to make sure that the entrepreneur is supported. And many entrepreneurs have told me that they have trouble in Erie finding the support they need to take that business. You also, um, as I talked about the library, and what our library will do is we put this idea lab in there. It's going to become a meeting place. Um, entrepreneurs can come there to meet each other, to bounce ideas off of each other, to find the information that they need. The, the library is going to become much more of a vibrant life force within that entrepreneurial community. So we know that things are bad. We saw the Milken Report. We've seen the study from Jumpstart. And so now is certainly the time. It's really past time, but we've got to move some point, and we're going to move forward and try to help encourage that entrepreneurism. And our universities are doing a great job, but we've got to do better. Uh, they've got you know, incubators. They've got other um, pieces to the entrepreneurial puzzle that they're working on. But we've got to do better, and that's where I think a group like the Innovation Collaborative can help drive that. Now, this past year with the budget, uh, we had to dip into the reserves in order to uh, pass a budget that did not increase taxes. Uh, what's the implication for that in the long term for the county? Well, unfortunately, um, those expenses will be there next year. These are ongoing expenses, and it happened uh, in the last year of the Grossman administration. They also dipped into the reserve fund, and that's one reason why I asked for a tax increase this year, because that figure grows every year because expenses grow. So... Um, I'm concerned about our long-term health uh, fiscally because we have a reserve fund now, which is obviously important as you're looking at borrowing uh, for this radio project, and we want to keep a bond rating that is good that will cost us less to borrow money, and if we keep on dipping into the reserve fund, that's going to affect our long-term ability to, to borrow and will cost the taxpayers more money in the long run. Well, when you talk about the radio project, though, a lot of people asking, can we afford it? I don't think we can afford not to do it. And I'll tell you why. Most people maybe don't understand this. But you take the fire that happened in Erie um, in the late fall when three houses on um, Lighthouse Street burned down. The Lake Shore, or I'm sorry, the Lawrence Park Fire Department came in to assist the Erie Department in this very large fire situation. Those two companies could not talk to each other. So the uh, assistant chief from the Erie Fire Department had to run up the street to tell the chief from uh, Lawrence Park that they needed more water out of the hydrant. 
These kind of situations happen all the time in our community. We have firefighters inside a burning building. They cannot talk to someone outside the building to tell them they need assistance. We have um, people coming to help their elderly in nursing homes and in large apartment buildings, and they can't talk to anyone outside of the building. So this radio system is something, it's been a combination of systems brought together from the 1970s, and it doesn't work. And if we had had the snowstorm that hit Buffalo, hit our region, we would have seen a collapse of that system. This is at a dire point in its life, and we have got to do something about it. It really is a matter of life and death, certainly for our citizens and really for our first responders. Let me talk about something that, uh, that the president kind of put in the spotlight recently, and that is the whole issue of community colleges and, and his idea to, to help fund uh, educations through community colleges. Obviously, it was a priority of your predecessor to create one here. Um, it didn't work out for him. But do you think this is an idea that needs to be revisited in Erie County? Well, I've always been a supporter of a community college here in Erie County. In fact, when I was in Congress, I voted for a lot of funding that went to community colleges, hoping that we would have one here so we could take advantage of some of that federal funding. Unfortunately, it did not happen. And I don't think in the current climate we're going to see a community college that we had thought in that, uh, how can I say, in that type of uh, um, position come forward. But I, what I am hopeful for is this uh, rural community college that has come forth, and it's going to cover Erie County as well as numerous other counties in uh, the northern part of the state. Um, it's, uh, we have a representative from Erie County, Mary Beulah, on their board, and uh, we're going to see how that comes forward. They've got a year to put together the plan for that and how Erie County can become involved in that and will help all of, all of our students. And then I also thank the Preco College um, for coming forth with uh, an alternative that is um, certainly serving many of our students. County Executive Kathy Dahlkemper, we thank you so much uh, for insight on this year, and we will see what happens in the next year. All right, and thank you thank very you. much for joining us for the 2015 State of the County Address and our question and answer session with Erie County Executive Kathy Dahlkemper. For all of us here at Jet 24 Action News, thank you. This has been State of the County Address. Thank you for watching.